Hey, it's Heather, and today I'm here with my friends Amanda and Jesse, and we're gonna do minimalist cooking because we are in a small New York City apartment temporarily, so our kitchen is hardly stacked. We're gonna do poached salmon and some boiled vegetables. So, Amanda, my poacher, uh, we wanna get the poaching liquid going early, and of course you can poach in water, but why? You can flavor it with so many different things. We're gonna put those vegetables in the water. We have a bunch of dill, just because I like dill. We have onions and carrots. Uh, you could add celery, you could add shallots, whatever you got going. I also like to put in a little acid, so there's our lemon. And we're gonna take the zest off. We're gonna use a peeler. You wanna to try to not get too much of the white, the pith. Okay, so just cut that in half and then you're gonna squeeze half of the juice into the poaching liquid. So, also, I like to add a little wine. I just put in about a half a cup. No real reason not to add red, except of course it's going to change the color. So we would like to have a little salt and pepper. Mm. Peppercorns, sometimes, but I don't get hung up on peppercorns. We only have salt and pepper packets. Isn't that cute? They have packets. Um, How but that's many handy. Packets? So let's do a perfect measure. Let's do two pepper and two salt. A lot of times people don't necessarily add salt to the water, but I do, ha uh -huh. So I'm also gonna do vegetables. Now if you have a great big steamer, you can do all your vegetables in a steamer, one pot, um, but we don't because it's minimalist cooking. So we just have two pots of boiling water going and you can get some of those salt packets, Jesse, and <laughs> add it to the, to the water. And we're gonna do, uh, potatoes in one pot and carrots and string beans in another. Here's my new thing with vegetables. I can't just do one. So if I'm doing string beans, I might as well just cut up a carrot and add that to Or If I'm doing zucchini, I might as well just add some lima beans. So that's my new thing, how to add extra vegetables to your life. You know, potatoes, obviously, you want to cook through. Not, there's nothing appealing in any way, shape, or form about a potato that's undercooked. People have their choices in vegetables. Maybe I like them a little al dente. I'm over that. Done. Done with al dente. I'm feeling, especially with string beans and carrots, I want them cooked. Okay, so poached salmon requires salmon. And here I have uh, about two pounds. Gonna make a little extra. Maybe we can do something with the leftovers. Uh, but figure no more than like a half pound per person. That's really, really quite generous. Make sure you get it skinned. If you, usually that's how you can get it, if you get it like in a grocery store. But if you have a fish uh, monger, as they call them, uh, ask them to skin it, they'll do it, no problem. So it's time to slip the salmon into the pan. You want them to be fully submerged. Sometimes I have to cheat and add a little extra liquid because I really want them underneath. Salmon. I think we're gonna have to add. Okay, mm -hmm. we can add. Okay. Um, good. We're covered. Yeah, All right, covered. good. So now what you're gonna do, you can put the lid on. Keep the fire low. We don't want to overcook. Don't want to overcook. You can almost kind of undercook salmon a little bit. Of course, if you were poaching chicken, you can't do that. And indeed, you can poach chicken very much in the same way. Chicken breasts, even if you're digging at chicken thighs, skidless. Um, I would use tarragon or parsley. Not till, just because that's what I like. Um, so we're gonna let that go for maybe two, three minutes and take a peek. Those are sort of thin. If they were thicker, I'd let it go for five. All right. Time to take out the salmon. Open the lid, and I want to just say, hopefully the water's going to do what I want it to be doing. You want the water to be ever so slightly bubbling. Ever so slightly, not too much. That's perfect. And now, just take it out. Don't worry about breaking it. Just slip it out. Oh, so good. Hey, well yeah, done. So good. Look at that. Definitely feels good. And uh, the thing about poached salmon, of course, is that you don't have to serve it hot, but you can. You could put it in the refrigerator for tomorrow. You could chill it in that liquid and put it in the refrigerator for a lovely ladies' lunch, say. So we will see you at the table with everything all put together. All right, here we have our minimalist poached dinner. Simple? Yes. That's yeah. very now, good. Well, I, <laughs> I feel like we're sitting on the coffee. <laughs> Ask me yes. questions. The mustard. Why do we have mustard? Well, I love Dijon mustard. And I think in and of itself, it's almost like a sauce. So on a day like today, when we're minimalist, uh, I'm just gonna smear some on my plate. But you don't have to use mustard. What other sauce would you prefer? 
You know, I think capers go really nicely with salmon, and if you chopped up some capers and parsley, a little lemon, a little oil, boom, you have a sauce. So it's really how much you want to do. That's, that's the way I see it. And of course, because it's me, I have wine. One of the great things about salmon is that it is an incredibly flexible, wine-friendly food. It is a fatty fish, so that means it can take a red. A lighter red, and this one <clears throat> is from Italy. Love Italy and Pinot Noir. This is from a northern region, one of my favorites. They have beautiful whites and reds. This one sells for about 14. And this one is a Pinot Gris, also known as Pinot Grigio, but here in Oregon they call it Pinot Gris. It'll be a bit more pronounced than the ones you are typically used to in your local bar. I'm gonna take a little taste and then take a little sip. Please join me. Yum. Mm. Salmon's a flavorful fish. It's really a great thing to poach because you don't have to worry about it being bland because it already has so much to offer. So today's lesson, aside from the obvious poaching, that's a lesson in and of itself, is that you do not need uh, fresh cracked peppercorns and Himalayan salt to have a great meal. You can do what you have and uh, pick out what you have in your cabinet, celery, carrots, whatever, salt packets, and have a great meal. So for wines, for recipes, and much, much more, Please hit my website, so good.tv. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.